welcome. Welcome to the module where our tagline of the week is that there is nothing more practical than a good theory. Now, I realize that the word theory scares many people, especially practitioners such as yourselves. But as we will see in this module, whether we know it or not, we actually live and breathe theories. For example, when my husband was unusually quiet this morning, I had a theory about it. And a bad theory can be really misguiding, but no theory would make us blind. So let's put that in the context of this class. So, so far, you have thought about a practical problem in the world that you care about, and you've brainstormed what questions or puzzles this practical problem might raise for you intellectually. Why would it be at this stage that you might need to think about theory? Well, whatever problem you're thinking about, the truth is that you already have some theory. You already have some intuitive story of what's going on. And that story results from your experience. It may fit the context that you want to study, or it may not. And either way, for better or worse, the story that you have will shape what you do with your research. And it is very, very important that you become aware of the assumptions that you have and that you think about how you might actually be wrong in those assumptions. And what we are inviting you to do in this module is to consider other theories that might actually strengthen yours. So the word theory might sound scary, but what a theory is, is it's basically just a story of what is happening and why. And we all have theories, and a theory consists of two things. It's concepts joined by relationships. So for example, let's think about a theory of what makes people employable in the context of higher education. So I'm imagining there might be at least two of you out there who are a lot like Clay from the previous video. You see the pace of change in our world, you really care about higher education, responding to the needs of a fast-changing job market. And depending on your experience, there might be one of you out there who, based on the story that your experience has told you, you might imagine a case study of how a successful institution implemented a faster, more agile process of developing current curriculum. There might also be another person out there, another one of you who cares about the very same thing, but your experience tells you a different story. Your experience suggests a different story. And what you might wanna do is study an institution that you have in mind that succeeded in our fast-paced world by focusing not on specific uh, competencies that employers might want, but giving students a holistic education that helps with competencies like the ability to think, to learn, to work on a team. And you figure that with such competencies, graduates can adapt to any kind of market no matter how it changes in coming years. So your choice of research question and the site of your study is going to reflect your experience and it's going to reflect your working theory of what works. So the two research designs that I described reflect two very different working theories, right? Theory number one is that people are employable when they have specific skills that are desired by employers. Theory number two is that people are employable when they know how to learn, when they're motivated to learn, when they know how to think critically, when they can adapt to a fast-changing job market. The important thing is that each of these theories gives you a completely different study. So do you think you see why it would be important to think about theory and to examine our assumptions critically? Because the theory you have will be determine the kind of study that you do. So it's very important to think how your theory might be wrong, how it may be narrow, how, how it may be incomplete, 
And before you commit to any particular methodology to consider the theories of others. And when I say others, I mean scholars who have written about your topic, I mean great theorists, intellectuals, but also the people that you are thinking of studying. What are their theories of what's going on? Now, why would that be important? There's a lot of reasons, but the main one is that no theory is perfect. Because even the best theory will always be a simplification of the world. And it will always be shaped by the perspective of the person who came up with it. And that is normal, and that is expected. Um, so no theory can be considered entirely true, but it can be better or it can be worse. Your theory will always be imperfect, but you want a theory that can bring useful insight. You want a theory that will broaden your understanding and not just yield a bunch of platitudes. So no theory can illuminate everything, but we need some kind of theory to see anything. Because with the wrong theory, we're misguided. But with no theory, we're blind. So think back to the two theories of what makes people employable. Neither of them is perfect, right? If you think it's specific skills that are desired by employers that matter, well, who has a glass ball to tell us what employers will want in four years when we know the generational cycle for technology is 18 months? And if you think it's transferable skills like critical thinking and teamwork that matter, who can be an engineer or an IT specialist with just transferable skills, right? So neither of these theories is perfect. They could really complement each other quite well. So both of these theories illuminate something, but they also both leave something in the dark. What they both leave in the dark, by the way, is that employability depends on a lot of other external factors that have nothing to do with universities. You may have all the best skills, but if there's a recession or your country floods as sea levels rise, it really won't matter. So no theory is perfect. But imagine you have no theory of what makes people employable. What would you even study? Would you just go to some employed people and ask them how it happened? Well, who would you choose? Even this approach would have a theoretical and very questionable assumption that people know and are able to tell you what made them employable, right? So to summarize, it's inescapable that we have some theory of reality, we all do, and our theory can be better or worse, it can illuminate something or just yield findings that everyone already knows. Your theory will be better if you get beyond your own assumptions and if you explore the theories of others. And that is exactly what we encourage you to do in this module. The sense you make will never be perfect, but without some theory, you will not be able to make any sense at all. And what qualitative research is especially good at is questioning old theories and generating new ones. And with that being said, your theoretical framework, if you do a qualitative study, is not going to be something that you find out there. That is more often true in quantitative research where you kind of test existing theories, you look at relationships between variables that you've sort of selected and isolated. But in qualitative research, your theory is something that you build. And you build it out of what Maxwell calls modules. And these modules are bits of your own reading, your own experience, your thought experiments, and, and you put those together. And with qualitative research, what you will be able to do really well is contextualize theories, kind of set them side by side with a specific context. You'll be able to improve theories, and you may even be able to make new ones. Uh, what often happens in qualitative dissertations is that you start out with a theory that you've put together, and then based on your findings, you may show how this theory might work really differently in a specific context, and that's in light of what you empirically learned from the population that you studied. So what is your story of what's happening and why? And how may you expand your theory 
in this module and who might help you do that. These are our challenges for you in this module. And remember, there is nothing more practical than a good theory.